We rally around shared principles. We show the world that we settle differences of opinions not with blows and not with weapons, but with discussion and engagement and even friendship. This is a moment to make clear that Los Angeles stands against anti-Semitism. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti last night condemning recent attacks against Jewish residents in the Los Angeles area. One attack on diners outside a sushi restaurant Tuesday where various anti-Semitic slurs were shouted, then escalated to violence. The Los Angeles Times reporting, quote, a witness told the Times that people from the car caravan began throwing bottles and other items at diners. They were chanting death to Jews and free Palestine, said the witness, who asked to remain anonymous because he feared for his safety. They had malice. And in New York, police are investigating a gang assault of a Jewish man last night as a hate crime. One person so far has been arrested for the beating, which took place in the middle of the street following pro-Israeli and pro-Palestinian protesters clashing in Times Square. The Anti-Defamation League has put out disturbing new data showing a rise in online and real-world incidents of anti-Semitism in the U.S. since this recent outbreak of violence between Israel and Hamas. Joining our conversation, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. Clint Watts is still with us. Jonathan, this is just the second story of the hour that's just shocking to, to read and say out loud. Um, I, I want to ask how we solve it, but I, I want to first ask you for your uh, sense of what's going on. Jonathan, we're going to fix your audio. Oh, can you hear us? That, yeah. Can you hear me, Nicole? Yeah. Start over. Great. Yes, so we can. Go ahead. Start over. I'll just say thank you for covering this story. It hasn't gotten nearly enough attention in the media. At ADL, we've oh. seen just week over week since the incidents, since the fighting in the Middle East started, more than a 50% surge in anti-Semitic attacks here in the United States. From New York City to Los Angeles to Illinois to Florida to New Jersey to South Carolina and more and more. So incidents like assaults in broad daylight, Jewish people being chased down and beaten, reports from Southern California of men throwing bottles at homes that had Jewish mezuzot on their doors, right? Acts of vandalism at synagogues where a pro-Palestine demonstration ends up with broken windows and graffiti on a Jewish house of worship. And just out and out acts of harassment that literally things being said to people that I can't repeat on the air. So we are deeply alarmed by this because literally just yesterday, President Biden signed into effect the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, which was prompted by Asian Americans being held collectively responsible for policies of China. In the same way, from President Biden on down, we need elected officials to do what Mayor Garcetti did, to say holding Jews collectively responsible for Middle East policies, that's not activism, Nicole. It's anti-Semitism, and it should have no place in our political what? dialogue, and the people committing these crimes need to be brought to justice. You know, my dear friend, Bianca Golodriga, was interviewing the Pakistani foreign minister, and she stopped him cold when he used some anti-Semitic slurs. So it's not just gangs on the street. It's foreign leaders. Let, let me just read some of this and, 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 and ask you how, how, to, how we fight that. So the uh, Pakistani foreign minister said... Um, that the pressure on public opinion is mounting, the ceasefire is inevitable, Israel is losing, they're losing the media war, despite their connections, they're losing the media war. Biana says, what are their connections? He says, deep pockets. She says, what does that mean? He says, well, they are very influential people. I mean, they control the media. She then, um, in the moment, called it out, said, I would call that an anti-Semitic remark. <laughs> When you've got um, senior government officials um, trotting that out, it, it, it certainly has an, an extension and a tail that you see on social media or on Facebook and Twitter. Hitler was right, I think, was trending this week. But how do you, you know, what is sort of the, the whole of um, society pushback when you've got a, a, one of the most senior leaders in Pakistan trotting this out and then it filters all the way down to an individual's Twitter account? How do you, how do you fight well, all exactly of that You're exactly correct. We need a whole of society strategy to combat this kind of hate because indeed from foreign ministers 
to the mobs on Twitter. And indeed, you know, at ADL, we track extremism offline and online. Our Center for Technology and Society last week saw 17,000 tweets that were all saying that Hitler was right for slaughtering the Jews or something like that. That's why at ADL, we're working with elected officials, law enforcement agencies, community leaders, the social media companies to pull down these unhinged memes, right? To push back on these crazed conspiracy theories. We shouldn't be surprised when people make hysterical, exaggerated, fictionalized claims that, you know, the Jewish state is intentionally murdering babies or that the Jews control the media, that unhinged conspiracy theories, Nicole, spawn unhinged activities in the street. And there's a consequence to it. And that consequence is people getting beaten, assaulted and hurt in ways that I think makes all Jews feel afraid, but should make all ordinary people feel afraid like this is not America. And so I think it's critical what you're doing by exposing your audience to this story is a start, because unless we have attention on it, people won't realize the extent of the problem and we'll never solve. In terms of the extent of the problem, I mean, you, you've been um, you've seen a lot and you've been in that role. I wonder where you place this moment in, in terms of, of how you feel. Do you feel scared? Well, I, I think I do feel scared. And I've heard from Jewish people all over the country in the past week who are alarmed from college campuses to La Cienega Boulevard in Los Angeles. People are feeling under assault. It's like a Charlottesville every day when someone is driving down the street targeting Jewish neighborhoods, Nicole, and through a bullhorn and a megaphone screaming, you know, are you Jewish? And then again, throwing bottles at people like this isn't normal. Now, I will tell you, ADL has been fighting hate for over 100 years. We've seen in the past that tension in the Middle East can spawn hate crimes here. But I must say, from the far right, and your last segment was talking about, you know, something we've tracked as well, the right wing extremists who stormed the Capitol on January the 6th to the you know radical left who make these unhinged claims about it, the Jewish people or the Jewish state. The Jewish community is feeling pressure from both sides, feeling anxious about where do we go mm. from here? Now, many people are going to you know, our website, ADL.org, and reporting these kinds of incidents. But it's going to take everybody, Nicole, on the left, in the right, in the center, in the media, in government, in law enforcement, to work together if we want to push this prejudice back in the corner where it belongs. Clint, you know I'm coming to you on on this burden on law enforcement as as well as, you know, how do you make sure that social media is not facilitating violence on the streets? Nicole, compare this to the 1980s. If there was a global conflict, uh, most places around the world, you did not see outbreaks of violence based on ethnic identity. And this isn't just this one incident. I mean, it's awful right now. We were talking about anti-Asian hate. Uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, if you rewind over the last four years, it's been anti-Semitism pretty much nonstop in terms of many of the attacks that have occurred around the country. Uh, I worked with LAPD a little over a decade ago when Commissioner Bratton was there. And what was remarkable is for every conflict there was, they were seeing increasing amounts of conflict locally because they're an international community. They have people from all over the world that live there. And they were being targeted for things that they oftentimes weren't even aware of. You know, they didn't know where it was coming from. The only reason this can possibly happen nowadays is, is that exact point about social media. If you went out there today, the, the amount of anti-Semitic hate that you would see in the social media environment, in the online environment, is enormous. It, it's, ac it's massive. And it's coming from many directions. And every time... Uh, someone sees that that just has a slight inclination to do something, they become further mobilized around it. So it's really a two-part challenge. One, for the social media companies, they have to be able to throttle and recognize it. When you see a conflict breakout somewhere in the world, in this case, it's Israel and, and, and Palestinian uh, conflict that's going on, you've got to get there quick to start metering that content and making sure that it's not getting out of control. The second part is for a lot of these law enforcement agencies, is knowing their communities, having that outreach that's there. We, we spent a lot of effort a decade ago to do that, to build that sort of outreach.
But after the George Floyd protest, after the election conspiracies have been out there, and now moving into this new period, we've lost that trust between law enforcement and these local communities. So we have to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. I think it's two priorities, which is really, how do we stop violent rhetoric? Because the more violent rhetoric that's out there, the more violent action we'll see. And there's going to be more attacks like this it, as long as we don't come back together as a country and really in this, what is a multipolar ethnic conflict that's going around in our country like I've never seen at any time in our history.